Okay, on my workbench is a much happier Swiss-made Elna Supermatic. Uh, this machine came to me by way of Eileen, who's had it since it was brand new. This has been her go-to machine. Uh, she ran into a problem while she was using it. Uh, ended up uh, uh, having the needle uh, basically strike um, the hook system uh, in the raceway. Uh, some damage resulted and it was a very complex uh, repair. Uh, as you may have seen in some of the Facebook posts, uh, there are so many tiny little screws in the raceway and the hook system on these Swiss made uh, machines. I think that reminiscent of making Swiss watches, they decided to carry that over to their machines and boy oh boy was that uh, uh, a challenge to tackle. But you know what, we got it done. And Eileen had gone to a couple of other folks that basically said, we're not going to touch it. Uh, we're not going to even try to take a swing at this machine. And she was kind of emotional about it. I mean, this has been her machine, her go-to machine forever. And that's, that's a real sensitive point. So she had reached out as a result of seeing uh, an advertisement I put in one of the small papers in this local area that I've relocated the workshop to and reached out kind of hesitantly saying, you know, I don't know if you can even take something like this on. No one else will. I said, you know what? You get the machine to me and we will make it right. And after probably close to 10 hours of work, we got it right. So uh, this machine is ready to uh, head back to uh, Mountain, Wisconsin, where Eileen is from. She's been there for quite a while. And... Um, you know this is a part of who she is so really excited to get this machine back to her going to travel there tomorrow uh, in the car with the family and get this back to her so that she doesn't have to make the trip back to the workshop again so what do you guys know about Elna's I'll be honest it's not a machine that I have on the workbench very often as many of you probably know so you know, I did a little bit of research, and I was just curious, what is this Elna company all about? Obviously, it has Swiss roots, but what else? Well, some of you that are really into the Elna brand probably already know that their subsidiary is Janome. They're basically building Janome and Elna machines in the very same factories. And uh, Janome, unlike Elna that is Swiss-based, uh, the Genomity brand is actually out of New Jersey. So, uh, but all in all, the, the, the two companies are intertwined right now. And the history of the Elna Sewing Machine Company really reaches back into the 1930s. There was a gentleman of Spanish descent. Uh, his first name was Ramon. And he also was a doctor. And his interest really sparked when he ended up coming back after all of his studies as a Spanish engineer and uh, ended up going back to his family's house. And they said, hey, you know, we've got a machine that won't work. We know you're a doctor and all that kind of stuff, but can you help fix it? And so he ended up uh, sitting down to that machine at his parents' house and basically kind of tinkering on it and eventually was able to get it running real well and really kind of developed a fascination with the intricacies of sewing machines. Does this sound familiar in any way? Kind of like my pilgrimage that kind of took me into the path of beginning to tinker on sewing machines, oh, 15, 16 years ago, uh, and all of a sudden, now I've got this passion and I've imparted that passion to all of you, and now we're having all kinds of fun. You know, there's headaches along the way, but a lot more fun than headaches. So the roots of, of this really cool machine, the Elna, most people immediately associate it with Geneva, Switzerland. It's, it's stamped with that, and, but there are other ties to it as these things were coming together with this uh, Spanish immigrant that all of a sudden uh, took this company to a different level. So I can, I can dabble on for a while and talk more about the roots of the company, but we wanna focus on this machine on my workbench. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer and uh, give you a closer look at this machine. You've already seen some of the uh, shots on Facebook. 
So I'm not going to go a lot into the particulars of the machine because really what I'm looking to do, Eileen uses this for a lot of straight stitching, piecing together and uh, that sort of work. So, you know, apart from saying that it's got the capacity and I will kind of zoom in on that and then spin my screen around. You've seen this already uh, in the still shots on Facebook. I'm going to try to spin my screen around here. So if you, if you follow this on Facebook at all, uh, you're going you're gonna to see that this machine has the capacity to do all kinds of cool stuff. Just like a number of the other machines that have been on this workbench. The 401 that recently was on the workbench that uh, belongs to uh, my friend Janie, who's also Wisconsin-based. You know what? That 401 doesn't have to have all of these cams. I'll turn it like this. You probably can see it a little bit better. These are all cams that go with this Elna Supermatic. That is, if I can grip one of them, they're kind of tucked in there. But you can see these cams. There's a bazillion cams. And some of the Elgin machines are, are similar to that, where they've got all these different cams. And there's going to be common stitches on each one of these cams. So it looks impressive, and you know what it is. But at the same time, there's a lot of duplication on these cams as well. And we're not going to even be concentrating on these, but it's a neat little caddy that can slide right past that free arm that I had taken all apart to fix the hook system on this machine. And there's all kinds of other goodies uh, in here as well that uh, you can certainly utilize. And I don't know that... Uh, you know that the owner of this machine, Eileen, really uses all of the gadgets and bells and whistles herself a whole lot, but I know she loves this knee control. It really is a nice way. And the Elna Supermatics also came with a foot control as well, but Eileen's happens to have this knee controller on it. And in, in working with it, you know what, there's a lot of pluses about it. Although it's a little bit cumbersome as you're moving back and forth from the workbench where you kind of get your leg kind of caught in that knee control a little bit. Maybe I just don't have good coordination, but um, all in all, it's a, it's a nice machine. Um, even after going through this machine very meticulously, I still think that they're a little bit on the clunky side. And once you get them running, they run nice and smooth. Uh, and they've got wonderful feed dogs. I don't know if I could really do them justice in zooming in. But even more so than the Husqvarna's or the FAF machines, these feed dogs, you want to talk about moving material, they don't mess around. Uh, they, and this machine, again, from the later 1950s, early 1960s, it's been given a lot of use, and there's no evidence of that on the feed dogs as well. I, again, on the Facebook post, you may have seen that I took the feed, digs, feed dogs off. Uh, I'm giving them a new name now. Now they're feed dags, but... No, they're feed dogs. <laughs> it's kind of late uh, in the workshop. I'm, I'm here rather late tonight finishing up this machine so I can get it back to Eileen tomorrow in Mountain, Wisconsin. So I'm getting a little bit sappy here, so just bear with me. Uh, but wonderful feed dog system. They do a phenomenal job of moving that material. They really do. Uh, again, with all the machines that I've had on this workbench, I just think the Elnas are a little bit clunkier, but you know maybe that's an unfair judgment. If any of you are passionate Elna operators and you think that they're not real clunky, you know, post your notes or send me a nasty gram or something. But I've spent a lot of time with this machine over the last oh, week or so, and um, I just don't think they're quite as smooth for being a Swiss engineered machine. Um, yeah, that's my opinion. Anyway. I'm not looking to bash Elna's. I, think, I, I do like certain things about them. So, at any rate, <laughs> I'll probably never post another video about Elna again because I'm going to get all these nasty grams from all of you about them. So, at any rate, let's do some leather sewing with Eileen's machine. Um, this is going to be a vegetable tan leather. If you kind of look at the back of it, you can see that grain. Uh, this is really a, a product and a material that is really engineered to say, you know, try to pierce me, try to go through, buddy. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this uh, Elna up and uh, just do a little bit. We're gonna be doing only straight stitching, 
And again, I want you to be able to listen to the machine. Maybe you'll agree with me that it does sound kind of clunky when it first launches off uh, that, um, you know, that, that, that initial sewing and before it gets into its rhythm. And then it starts to sound pretty doggone good. So I'm going to be quiet, you listen, and then let me know what you think. And we're just going to be doing a straight stitch. I like the maneuverability of this on it. It makes beautiful turns. Again, those feed dogs just really steer that material beautifully. So that's another plus about this machine, in my opinion. All right, here we go. And again, I won't say anything, which is really difficult for me, so you can listen to this machine run. Here we go. So, I, I don't know if you can hear kind of what I'm talking about. It sews nicely once it gets into a rhythm, but it's just because of the belt system on this, it just, it's not quite as smooth as some of the other machines that we've had. But you know what? Now that we've got that hook system fixed and everything, it does a real nice job. And it also has an interesting way of adjusting the tension that pulls that thread down in the raceway. Um, it's not right on the band as you normally would expect it to be. It's actually offset from that. And I forget what, how they refer to it in the book. I've got the book all the way on the ground. At any rate, it's a different adjustment that you have to make on this Swiss machine. And But all in all, it does a really good job. This is our top stitch. The spacing, the formation, uh, I'm going to bring it up a little bit. The spacing, the formation is uh, really, really nice. It's spot on. If we turn it over, the lock stitch as well, and I haven't helped you out a whole lot here. This is real light but the, the stitch quality is spectacular and you can't see any of that bright uh, orangey harvest color thread coming through so the balance is real nice on this and I can try to zoom in a little bit at the end and let you take a closer look at it. So I'm going to throw that vegetable tan leather to the side. Uh, I think it did a real nice job on that and now we're going to do some genuine cowhide. You can look at the back of here kind of see that nap in there and uh, just the overall texture of this leather this stuff is rough stuff it really is and it can it can break a machine and uh, mow down a machine real quick uh, unless it's been uh, serviced properly so I'm gonna go ahead again we're just gonna be focusing on a straight stitch lower down that uh, those uh, that presser foot on the feed dogs and we're just gonna buzz around this genuine cowhide. This is probably, and I didn't mention about the vegetable tan, vegetable tan is probably about four to six ounce uh, leather. This stuff's a little bit thicker. You're probably looking at about six, maybe almost eight ounces of leather. It's uh, pretty thick stuff. All right, let's see what this Elna Swiss made can do with this stuff. Here we go. I didn't make my turn so good there. Here we go. <laughs> I'll be a little bit more aggressive. Ah, boy, went off course here. All right, I'm going to do this one again. Doggone it. <laughs> but the stitch looks really good in spite of my misguided venture of going on that leather turn there. Good gravy. All right, you silly thread. There we go. That sucker went down in there and tried to get jammed a little bit, but we got her out. Okay, I'm going to show this to you, and then I'll probably zip off something else, but I do like the color of this leather much more. You can see the quality of that stitch, uh, and I'll kind of move it a little bit in these lights just so you can hopefully see it a little bit better. I'll bring this light in, too. Again, it's late here at the workshop, folks. If I seem a little bit off, it's because it's late and it's been a real long day. Uh, I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of explaining if my rhythm seems off. Kind of like my sewing just going off the leather there. But this is a beautiful stitch. Uh, the formation, uh, the stitch quality is really spot on. I'm going to try to move it a couple of different ways so you can see it. Looks like it's a little bit clearer when I kind of put it on that angle maybe. 
Yeah, I think so. There we go. We'll get it right, folks. <laughs> if we turn it over, you can see. Uh, well, I kind of sewed over my own threads there, but oh well. There we go. All right, I fixed it. And you can see it did an excellent job of, of really driving that stitch home. These are great looking stitches. They really are. So while I kind of badger this machine a little bit, probably just because of the task of getting that hook system right again and getting it repaired, um, when, all is, when, all, when all is said and done, it does a pretty doggone good job as far as the stitch out, output. And I think it, it, it gives a nice presentation of what a good quality stitch should in fact look like. But I'm gonna go ahead and zip through, I think a little bit more, just because I don't want to leave you with the impression that this machine is not a decent one. And I'm gonna grab some other leather. What kind of leather is this? Let's see here. Scarlet full grain leather. Ooh, I like this. So we're gonna do a little bit of full full grain. <clears throat> Losing my voice, folks, long day. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of full grain leather as well. And I really like the color of this. This has a Christmas, kind of a scarlet red color. And I think will really, really be pretty with that orange uh, harvest color thread that I have on this machine right now. So I'm gonna go and slide this in and drop down that presser foot and uh, zip down this a couple times. This is a narrower piece. You, you can compare it to this one. So I may have to cheat and kind of raise that presser foot in order to get this to make it to turn. Unless I really kind of work that material. Let's see what we can do with it. Here we go. Yeah, those feed dogs really bite it hard. So I think we're going to cheat and Let's rotate that a little bit more. There we go. Oh, we got it caught there. Hold on. See that? You can see my mistakes. When I get tired, I get all kinds of sappy sew-offs here. But the final result is we've got a happy machine. Even if I'm not doing as good of a job with my sew-offs, uh, this Elna is doing an excellent job. So let me go ahead and move that. Okay, at last. What we have now is we have some full grain leather. I'm hoping you can see that uh, in the camera. I'm going to turn it like that so you can see it even better, hopefully. I've got my camera set up at this workbench differently, and it's a little bit of an adjustment. So, But what, what I can say about the stitch quality on this full grain leather is... It's, it's spectacular as far as its presentation. The spacing, the formation, the integrity of the stitch. This Elna did an excellent job on this full grain leather. And if I turn it to the side, see if I can bring it down a little bit and turn it to the side, there's the camera angle. Um, that's probably about four ounces of full grain leather. Any of you that know leather, full grain is pretty tough stuff to get through. And I'm gonna turn it over and we've got a, a gorgeous lock stitch as well. Actually, on this material, oops, we'll get it down a little bit. On this material, you can see it even more clearly just how spectacular that lock stitch, in fact, is. So I think that the Elna, both on this uh, genuine cowhide here, I think it did a spectacular job. Let me rotate that down a little bit because that, that light is kind of reflecting on it a little bit. There we go. I think that'll be better. Maybe. Or is it better without the light? I think it's partly the angle as well. There we go. I think that helps a little bit. You can kind of see the stitches there. The, the cowhide leather, I think it did a spectacular job on. It looks really good. The vegetable tan leather, an equally um, excellent job on this as well. And on this, because I had a larger piece to work with, you really saw the maneuverability of this Swiss made Elna Supermatic. So, I think also on the vegetable tan leather, uh, it did a spectacular job. And finally, on this full grain leather, in spite of my um, not so good execution in making turns and such, 
it also did a spectacular job on this as well. And the proof is in the pudding when it comes to the stitch quality. Um, I think the Elna did an excellent job of representing that stitch. And again, on the lock stitch as well, it did a fantastic job on that also. So I think this Elna, I'm going to go ahead and take out that knee controller so I don't get it caught on my leg. All in all, I think that this Elna is a fine machine. Um, I still argue that it's maybe just a little bit on the clunky side just because of the number of machines uh, that I've had the privilege uh, to work with. But again, people don't always see things the same way. So, you know, when it comes to machines, one person will be passionate and in love with a Swiss made Elna brand. Another person is hardcore Singer uh, or hardcore Husqvarna or hardcore Kenmore. And uh, it really is a personal preference. And I'm trying to get the right lighting here. I've got these new LED lights in my workshop, but it sometimes really kind of bleaches me out a little bit. So hopefully I don't look too sick. I, I don't feel sick. I'm tired, but <laughs> at any rate, this Supermatic is ready to finally go back to its owner in Mountain, Wisconsin. I'm ready to hang up the shingle for the day. It's about... 10 15 p.m. on a Saturday night and it's been long day <laughs> so passion is a driver but eventually you just burn out and I think I'm at that point so this Elna has given me a test of my endurance and my perseverance and I persevered but it's time to shut off the lights at the workshop and call it a day. So, Elna, Supermatic, what do you think? Stay tuned for more videos on machines you haven't seen on this channel before, like these Elnas, which are Swiss made. All right, that's it. Cut, cut, done. <laughs>